we can think about it. As I mentioned in the email that I sent, Megan is going to join us at 7.30 rather than at 7 o'clock because it turns out that works better for her schedule and she will be on the Zooms, in which case I would like to move on to the minutes of August 15th. And is there a motion to approve them? I just noticed that my last name is misspelled. Oh, did I spell your last name wrong? <laughs> yeah, it just says Kim. Oh, I'm going to change that right now. I know, we just met, so. <laughs> I got my name. <laughs> Depends so on which kind of accent it's, it's used. Just, an auto, yeah, yeah. It's probably an autocorrect. No, I'm sure it was, yeah. I'm yeah. even more embarrassed because the entire time I've known you, when you use it, that last name I pronounced it Kim. It is Kim. It is. I spelled it wrong. You just said Kim. I spelled no, it wrong. She just. I she know. Right. I know. Yeah, I yeah, thought you just said Kim. Now, when I lived in North Carolina, you can't tell yeah, the difference like, between those two. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, up here, it's more. I apologize. It is so corrected. <laughs> and I'm going to check the ones from the 29th, too. Do we have a motion? I don't remember having one. There's no motion on the table. I don't think so. Motion to accept the minutes of the August 15th meeting. As amended. As amended. Was there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. We do not have any publics. So let us move on to the director's report. Okay, uh, so I don't normally bring attention to the calendar as I just set it out and let people look at it and ask questions if, if they have any, but um, I want to just, uh, again, sing praises of uh, particularly Julia, who really kind of picked up the slack and have been uh, populating the calendar, not only with uh, programming for children and young adults, but also and some additional adult programming. We have a great workshop happening on Saturday, the 23rd, with, uh, with a um, pastel artist named Greg Maychek, or Maychek, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, who's going to lead uh, 30, as many as 30 adults here in the meeting room to do a pastel drawing of a George O'Keefe um, pastel. A uh, calla so, lily, I believe it is. What's that? I believe the flower is a calla lily. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, so everyone will do the same thing, and uh, he'll, he'll lead people through you know, various techniques uh, and that sort of thing. And that's that's actually a friend's supported program. But I, I do think it's remarkable that, you know, again, we're hitting the ground running with Julia now in her new position as of the 5th. And you know, this is already well underway. So we're really in good shape and I'm very grateful to all of their hard work. Um, can, I, yeah. can I just say that um, for all of you, I started the Facebook page. So for some reason, I always get emailed like every time there's action on the Facebook page and the action, like the number of events and action on our Facebook page is like at like an all time high, mm. right? Like since she started like it just feels like um, i have to figure out how to shut that off <laughs> yeah yeah I, actually that is bothersome you want me to i don't i don't know that you can mute it but if you want me to but take you off figure it out i just yeah, okay. yeah that's fine it is a lot um it's a good thing a it's good a, lie it's that's very, my point yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point um i just want to mention very briefly without going into any details because i have none to give um, but we are continuing to try to um, get some sort of resolution with the roof situation. We're trying to meet the town council. That's been postponed. postponed. I was hoping that we're going to meet this week, and that seems to be pushed back, and I don't have a date yet for that, but I'm hoping that we will be um, meeting soon and, and you know coming up with next steps for that. Uh, also, no update on the access part where I did reach out to Mike Spank and did not get a response on that. Um, 
in happy, happier news, we actually had a, a very nice visit with uh, Andrea Bunker from the MBLC, who was our liaison uh, to that organization and worked with us for a good part of the process when we were building the library. Um, and she came out for a post occupancy visit when they come out after you've been in the building for a while. At this point, like something, well, I mean, at this point, we've been in here for a long time, but open to the public for a year and a half. And, um, you know, they want to come out and ask what, what's working, what is not working, what would you do differently? You know, they're trying to, to evolve as they go through this. Um, so that's great. We talked for like three hours um, a couple weeks ago. And um, the report, I believe I set the report it's around as an attachment so you can see essentially the conversation that we had. Um, the kind of coincidentally, right after that uh, visit, we had a call from the uh, director at Montague, who they are also going, they're about to go through this process. So they're like at the very beginning of it. And that director, similar to my situation, is sort of getting dropped in right at the front end of it. Um, and so they're going to come down with a contingent of, I guess, staff and trustees and maybe members of their building committee to to just you know, tour the new building, talk about the process, um, our experience, and again, things that worked, things that didn't work, things to watch out for. Um, and that's 3 p.m. on September 21st. And anyone that's around that, you know, feels like being part of that conversation is more than welcome to to, to join. Um, the, 3 p.m.? What's that? 3 p.m.? 3 p.m. Oh, I might be a little to then. Uh, I am in the middle of the reporting season for the, again, for the MBLC for what eventually becomes our state aid. Um, payment where I've turned in the report for the statistical stuff, usage, you know, circulation, those kinds of things, and now working on the financial report. Um, that's due in October. Always fun. Uh, and as as you're aware, Julie has taken over um, as head of youth services, and we are in the process of scheduling interviews for the vacant youth services coordinator position now. Uh, it looked like there was potentially some interest from an internal candidate process of elimination. Well, <laughs> you know, that was that was Audris, and then she subsequently withdrew her interest in the position because of other developments. So, um, so we're back to a you know full full search. Um, we've got three good candidates that we're going to interview, uh, and we feel that we're in good shape as far as that search goes. And that's more or less what I have. That's what Okay. Um, I just want to report in terms of the director's annual evaluation that I will send you all a link to an online version that's, for those of you who were here last year, that is essentially the same survey tool that was used last year. But I've, excuse me, put it online. I already have responses from staff members. Susan and I created a very different form for them because their viewpoint is not that of looking at the job description and evaluating performance against that. Um, I glanced at it briefly to see what the responses were, and my sense is that staff members took time and provided fairly complete answers, and I think there is some useful information for going forward. And just to let you know that that is in the offing, and I would like to try to have that on the agenda for next time to go through that. Um, can I ask a clarifying question? Do you want us to take the survey or just so we can see it? I will send it to you to complete, please and thank you. Okay. So didn't we already do this this year? Or nope. Mm -mm. Seems like just session. <laughs> it was last December. Well, it was last okay. October, November. 
we did the evaluation in December and not since then. So this will be for FY23, which is a little bit awkward for the people who were just elected, but it is what it is. Community feedback. Just you one of those. Or you want me to come? Um, do you want to? You do you want to start us off? Um, will I find the right document here? Sure. <laughs> um, I'm not sure we can finish this in 15 minutes. I know that we're respecting Megan, but um, well, we can continue. Yeah, after exactly. Oh, no, that's so. The our charge was to collect community feedback. And that was the charge, essentially. So um, really, before we know what we need to do, we need to know what the goals of this feedback are, what we're hoping to learn so that we can come up with the adequate strategy to collect that feedback, right? So I gave a number of examples in the email. Um, I'm not sure if anyone got a chance to look through that. Um, but I do think our guiding principles should be we should only collect feedback on things that we're willing and able to change, right? So we're not able to double the size of the building. We're not, you know, there's mm -hmm. certain things that we're not able to do. We can't knock down this wall and make this bigger. Like there's certain things that we just really can't do. So we shouldn't ask about things that we can't do or that we're unwilling to do. So an example is, um, my, my best example I can give is hours, right? So if we're looking to, Add, we're going to go to the town and we're going to say, we need to have four more hours. We need to have support for that, the coverage of the staff, et cetera, in our budget. And our goal is to ask, what four additional hours should we put on our calendar? That's something we could do, right? If we all said we want to go and ask for four additional hours, we would collect community feedback and they'd say, we want these hours to be, you know, whatever, uh, Wednesday morning. I'm making it up, right? That's something we can be in charge of. But we shouldn't go out and ask if we're not willing or able to go and ask to add hours. And we shouldn't put out a more open thing about like what hours work for you, what hours don't work for you. Because if we do that and everyone comes back and says, I want you to be open all day Saturday, all day Sunday, right? Like mm -hmm. that might be outside of our abilities. You did that. When we remember we did yes. hours before, we did a survey like that. We actually had very specific correct because we were looking to add right. some additional hours. Right. And I so remember that having that down. conversation at the same time. Right. Like we need to be how many how many years ago was that? Oh man. Oh yeah, before the like in the old building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it might be really interesting to compare and see if availability or the times are the same or different if that's something that we want to pursue. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm just I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying that anyone even wants to ask about hours. I'm just giving that as an example of, um, you know, something that we would use a survey for, but we would, we depending on why we're asking it, blowing up all the hours, we're going to throw all the hours up, so we're still going to be open 30 hours a week or whatever hours are we, 32, 31, 35. Um, if we still want to be open 35, but it can be any 35, let's find out the best 35 for the community, right? Mm -hmm. If we wanted to do that, we could. Um, or we could say we're going to try to pursue four extra hours, but mm -hmm. we should only do things that we actually want to and can change. And we should only match the collection device to what we're trying to collect. Again, to the teen room, if we want to understand why all the teens in Hadley aren't using the teen room, we would not give a survey. We would go to Hopkins Academy, work with them, set up focus groups. We'd have some focus groups here. You know, we do other things to try to get feedback. So, you know, before we can do anything, we need to understand what are we trying to do? What do we hope to do? And I think, Allison, you said to me, I thought you put this really well, like, we also don't want to to put something out there that then suggests to people something that we actually can't follow up on, exactly. right? So I think the hours yep. makes this one really obvious. Yep. If it's totally unfeasible for us to have staff in here on Sundays, yes, we shouldn't ask people wide open because then that raises that expectation mm -hmm. and then they're disappointed that we don't deliver it. Exactly. Yep. So um, can, I, can I just ask, 
how this information is going to be gathered? Are you sending out questionnaires? Or that's what I'm trying to determine. So it depends on what we're trying to trying to you know achieve by community feedback. What do we mean by community mm -hmm. feedback? Why are we collecting it? Again, to the teen room. If we want to know about teenagers, survey is not the best way. If we want to know about something very specific about ours, probably a survey is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Joanne. Um. As someone who just came to the board while this was already going, I just wondered, like, what made you originally think that you wanted community? I'm, I'm not putting it down. Asking mm -hmm. why, like, where did the idea come from? Because that might help me understand a little bit more. Usually, if you want community feedback, it's because you're specifically looking for something. Yep. And correct me if I'm wrong, Lynn, but this all came out of, Lynn had an idea of having a, like, now that the library was complete, we're, like, moving into, like, okay, we're, like, the dust has settled. Now, what is our vision for the library in the next five years or ten years or something like that? And one of the things that popped up that we might want to do is collect community feedback. So it's, a, it's really for a visioning activity then? That's just how it in seemed some, to be. It was, okay, we have this new and fabulous space, we can finally come in the building and do things together in the building. What kinds, how do members of the community see the possibilities for using the new space is where it started. That to me almost seems like a focus group more than a that seems really open ended to me. Like, and that's why I think we're kind of trying to actually narrow it down for now to make this a more contained and less I like think she big, to... big vision. Is she connected? This is yeah. this is us. This this is our meeting. Oh, so, but there there was a conservation committee meeting apparently that that we had to wait for that to end before we. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. If we can narrow it, that would be great. If we can't narrow it and it's just a visioning exercise, that's fine too. But I would agree with you that if, if this is a visioning exercise, if this is part, mm -hmm. you know, part one of visioning the, you know, Hadley Public Library for the next 10 years, probably a survey is not the way to go. I mean, I would agree. It's probably a series of focus groups or some sort of roadshow, maybe mm -hmm. a talk at town meeting with a quick survey, like, T tell us, you know, like a QR code, tell us your top three things. I mean, I'm just tossing it out there. Mm -hmm. That's. That's a little creepy. Yeah, how is that, <laughs> how's that working? It's the Panopticons. It's yeah. this. The, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, so it falls, it's supposed to follow the voice. Oh, I thought that was the speaker. It is. Exactly. it is. Oh, it's the speaker too. Oh, yeah, so when we're joined by our guest, uh, the sound should come from that. Hopefully. We haven't used it in a while. So. <laughs> we use these at work. They work really well. Yeah. So anyway, we're opening it up for you because Jess and I have had plenty of time to sort of talk back and forth with each other. We don't want to hear from each other. Um, and we do want to hear from the staff eventually. But since the staff in some ways is not empowered to make the changes they hear what community some of the things that are filtering out from the community but like we're the ones who have to set the direction for the library you and the trustees so that's why we thought we would start here and you know then go and say to the staff hey we're doing this focus group or we're having this survey and this was the goal of the survey can you help us think what else are we missing in this topic etc mm -hmm. yeah does the library have a comment box Suggest the old suggestion box comment. We do box. not. Yeah. We get a lot of we get a lot of comments by you know by email or um, certainly we have a lot of people that contact us through the the towns. But the website has a, a form where you can submit a question. I guess that's when people oh. have not figured out what our actual email address is, and <laughs> Jennifer forward that yeah. forwards them to me. Um, we don't have a proper suggestion box. We could have one. You know, you could do just... put a box on the website that says suggestion box and have it link to either the trustee's email or yours. 
And that's a topic that could be explored in a survey or in focus groups, because I know we've talked about redesigning the website. What would you like to see member of the community on the website? Could we make it suggestions for requests or something to make it more personal? Um, for, but sorry, a conflict of comment. Suggestion. Well, I mean, as you're talking about the suggestion box, I was thinking, well, why not be, why not just have a re request box? Because that is more immediate if somebody's well, filling it out. Or, but what do you mean? Just a request for like. Like if I saw a suggestion box about the library, I would think, yeah. oh, it's fine. But if somebody said request, if it said request, I would think, well, maybe get more of so and so or something. Uh, it's just a thought, you yeah. know. Suggestion uh, seems sort of cold. It seems less personal, and I think we, you, you the purpose is to engage personally with people. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it would be I think nice to have uh, if we were able to have some sort of a form that you could. I mean, this would be useful information anyway, but just from an operational standpoint, not necessarily from a survey standpoint, but just have, having a way for people to leave a comment within a set of categories. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a comment related to collections. I have a oh, comment okay. related to yeah. Yeah. You know, use of the building, or I have a comment about hours, hours wh whatever the, the case might be. Yeah. But if you call it, I'm concerned about calling it a request, because then that sounds like we're going to be obligated to do whatever you said you were requesting. Okay. Well, I requested that. Right. Why didn't you do it? Get this book from oh, Wow. Yeah. People are very optimistic if that's, if that's what, how they think the world works. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, just, no, I hear just calling it feedback just to say, you know, we'd love to hear your feedback on, you know, yeah. on these areas or right, whatever, right. Yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, um, what you said about the different categories, I think yeah. it's good. I think you just have to speak, Joanne, because that's how things are working. So. Um. <laughs> I I just wonder, like, kind of an open-ended, like, community feedback. It seems like when we were building a library, we had a specific vision. We had vision for a long time. It seems almost to me like we should go through a visioning activity, and from that, then we should get feedback, right? Because then if we had a vision then we would know what, like, say we, we did a visioning and we had community members and we had, you know, a group of people visioning and the visioning came out that we want to add more like, you know, in the next five years, we want more hours in library. Then we know what to ask, but without a visioning se session and like a, a plan for the next five years, it seems like your task could be really like big and open-ended without like a solid vision for the library. Are you suggesting an internal visioning exercise with us and maybe the staff or are you suggesting going first to the community and having the visioning exercise with the community you or know, both simultaneously? Like we, with the we did plan. run a few of them last yeah. time, right? We did we had different versions. We had a community one mm -hmm. where we talked to, we invited community and we actually invited, we had one with teens, I mm -hmm. think. And then we had one with the trustees and staff. Mm -hmm. And that was really to build, you know, the vision of our library. But if we are now here, like if you say, then, well, what is the next thing? Obviously, we're not going to build in five years, but... We want to be doing something in five years. What is something? Like, I, so I, I think like there may be like multiple <laughs> options here, right? Like, I think what you're describing is, uh, I think where we kind of started, um, right? Which is sort of thinking like we need to, we need to, like, we need to know what our priorities are. We need to know kind of what, you know, what the vision is for the library. Um, and I think that since we, since we were there, <laughs> And then the, the the place that we're at now, I think we got to was like, that feels really big and ambitious. And maybe what we need to do now is actually something that's more specific around particular, you know, j like just focus on programming or just focus on hours or do something that's more specific and maybe visioning happens at a, at a later date. I I guess I, I I wonder kind of what our appetite is for something that feels sort of big and I don't know when I think about going through like a like a visioning process that to me feels like big 
Um, takes a lot of investment, both in terms of sort of time and creativity, and then in terms of follow through. Um, and so I think one question that's fair to ask is which direction are we feeling inclined to, to move in? And I think that's the right question to ask. I mean, I agree with you 100%, uh, like a true visioning exercise, like mm -hmm. we went through there, or when you have a new strategic plan mm -hmm. at your campus, mm -hmm. it's a like almost a year-long exercise, mm -hmm. at least a nine-month exercise. It does take a lot of effort. Um, you usually get a lot out of it. You usually mm -hmm. get way more than you can possibly use in that time, time frame, but mm -hmm. it does help you set like a real strategic direction. Mm -hmm. So if we feel collectively like we need that, then I would be in favor of going that way. Um, but I also would be to say if like your question was, was spot on, if we don't feel like we have it in us as a board, as a director, as staff, because it would take all of us to make this work. Um, if or if we, it doesn't feel like we need it now. It, or if we don't right? feel like yeah. we need it, then yeah. we shouldn't do it. We should say, hey, what areas are we missing? Do we need to know what goes in a library of things, right? To just take a look at another like, small example of something that I know we're working on the library of things. Do we just want to know what do people want to see in this, right? Or do we want to know what four extra hours would we <laughs> use once we go and ask for those four extra hours, right? I, I'm purposely picking things that I think are relatively simple. I also think, though, if you're thinking about being left money and will, if you were thinking about raising money for the future of the library, that's the first thing people want to know. Like, what are you going to do with it? In five years, you know, show me your vision. Yeah. Like, what is your vision? Who are you? Why should I give to you? I, I, you know, I know it's a lot of work, but I feel strongly that personally that like just adding willy nilly kind of questions is like just finding things to add without really getting input like say we get a community say we always an example of we we meet with a community and they're like we don't really think the library needs to be open more but we'd love to have like zoom programming i'm making something up right yeah. zoom programming at home that connects right to the library that's like something i could see in five years but we wouldn't know that if we didn't have visioning and if we just will it we had said oh we're gonna add more hours yeah we didn't really get that feedback to know that people are thinking differently about the library they want access from home or whatever, you know, whatever it is. I, I know I'm making something up on the fly, but I just feel like we're not really, we're not using the tools if we just, uh, the, the resources is the better word, of a community before, if we just go at things randomly. I wonder, I'd love to see kind of what the results of the last visioning process were. I mean, because it's like, could we look at that and perhaps ask ourselves, does this still feel... It's irrelevant. It was I'll just okay. now. Okay. It was about what, what do we need to consider in building a new library? Okay. It was yeah. a lot, there was okay. a lot of physical infrastructure stuff that would be irrelevant to us today. Got it. Yeah. I mean, there was other stuff. Okay. And there was a lot of, like, we felt like it's, it's our home, it's our community there. How are we going to bring that type of thing here, right? Mm -hmm. It was things that are just irrelevant today. I don't think it would be useful. Okay. But would it inform some sort of understanding of how successful were we in achieving as many goals or desires or wishes that were expressed as possible? Are there still unmet demands or were there requests for spaces to do things and are we doing those things in those spaces? It might, I mean, I understand how to some degree it's not relevant, but it might be worthwhile in the same way to look at this. Hey, Megan, can you, can you hear us? Apparently not. <laughs> Set this up. Do you have the right? Do you have that the right microphone chosen? That always hangs me up when I'm trying to connect the camera. 
See where it says audio down to your left in the Zoom? Here. No. No, in, in, in the, the actual room. Zoom menu. Go to the Zoom. Click out of this device manager. Second. Do you just want to chat and we're working on it? See that audio down below to the left? Oh. Yep. Yep. So if you click the up arrow, it might be looking can, for the wrong. Can you button. hear us now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. and click the up arrow. Yeah. And it. Uh, See, it's a meeting. Well, that's what it is, right? Yeah. Where is it? Test, go to test. Get your microphone. Test, test. Nope. Try another speaker. Can't hear it. Well, we're, you just is the output level down to zero? Is is that why none no. of that is lit up? You want to chat until we're working on it? Um, so where's the chat? Unmute the speaker or increase volume to hear other participants. See that up there? I think John's right. right over her head. See that? Yeah. So you may hear on the mute. Hmm. That's a different. That's a. That's you not. Do you think you? Um, <laughs> can you hear us now? No, no response. Sometimes I hit by accident. No, that's just like sound does. Okay, so the owl can hear us because it follows my voice, mm -hmm. but the this is not connected to that. Sorry, where's the chat box? I have done some like right here. Yep. Where is it? Oh, where is it? That's weird. Oh. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go up to view, at the um, yep. Will it show up? In no, the no. Try apps. I'm sorry, wait, just next between raise hands and whiteboard. I wonder if it is listed as an app or something. It's, I, I don't think I've ever seen it. Before. I've never seen I've it. I've never seen it either. Should I just go to my email and see if we get a phone or something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could also, dot, that's a good point. Dial into the Zoom on your phone. We'll just use your phone for the sound. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But we can't hear her, right? We can put her on speaker. This is a low tech solution, but we're working on it. <laughs> well, Alex, maybe you can help. Was that is that done? Maybe you can help. No audio. So there's somehow no audio on the owl. The owl can hear us and see it moves with the with us, but it doesn't. Uh huh. Well, we had we tried that. Yeah, we had that. Did you pass me a remote? Do you, sir? Can you try it now? No, no response. <laughs> okay. It's not you. <laughs> Could switch to phone audio. We're trying to call. Could we just quit Zoom and restart it? That often fixes a lot of things. Oh! oh! Wait, that's my phone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling. I hear you. Oh! There we go. What did you do? Oh, you what did you do? Can you show us? Uh. Rant. Oh! It's the TV. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for your patience and endurance on the one. Yikes. Um, I don't know where I came in in your conversation, so I'll, I'm waiting for instruction. No, we're waiting for you. Go for it. 
Your turn. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Sujinski. I work with the Hamden Hampshire Conservation District. Um, our office is located over at the USDA building right by and Bagel uh, on Route 9, and um, we all work remotely, so that doesn't really seem to matter anymore. <laughs> so we are sort of organizational neighbors. Um, we represent both um, Hamden and Hampshire counties in our both public outreach for conservation issues and education, especially, and with uh, producers. So I have a counterpart who works directly with um, all manner of producers, foresters, things like that. Um, so Patrick and I have been chatting about a new grants program that we are offering for the next year uh, to partner with municipal entities. Uh, we are specifically interested in libraries because of the high traffic and kind of community, central community um, services that libraries are now performing. They're just fantastic places to reach uh, our neighbors with different fun activities and informational resources and things like that. So first off, thank you for allowing us to distribute our plant sale um, items to the, our customers this year. That back as patio is going to be a great space for that. So thank you. Um, and Patrick and I walked the grounds a bit and talked about potential spaces that the trustees might be interested in having converted from sod into uh, native plant growing spaces, whether that's a meadow model on the lawn or whether that's more uh, working with the established beds that you have there to um, augment those or to develop a new one um, that, that complements the established beds. Uh, those are all some of the ideas that we talked about. Um, I see how precious your lawn space is probably for outdoor uh, activities. So uh, we focus more on balancing the bed that exists in the front of the building on the right with the possibility of a new one on the left. So that's where our conversation arrived at as a, as a logical step. Um, the, what the district offers is a landscape designer who specializes in uh, native plants. Both of our consultants are out of the, the Conway School of Landscape Design. So that individual would consult on the project, propose a design, and then once approved, uh, the district would fund the plant um, stock to go in there. So the things that would be helpful to have to enable that planting to happen would be um, if you have friends of a library organization or a gardening group that uh, associates or affiliates with your library um, that could help install those plants at some point when it's when it's um, been designated and it's been prepared for planting. So uh, along with that actual demonstration garden that we install and use as an educational um, outlet, we run educational programming for the public. Um, and so that can include um, programs for adults, children, a combination of both. Uh, but that would roll out over starting this winter into and through next summer. Um, and that is a good summary, I think, of the program that we're that we're proposing and that we're offering to um, to community partners right now. So I'm happy to answer questions. I have a question. Um, sure. I I'm a huge fan. If it left to my own devices, I would say, "Hey, come and turn everything into metal." But I know we are, have to live in the reality that is a town government. Have you done any other municipal um, plantings in Hadley or have you talked to anyone over in Town Hall about, you know, this? Have you gotten any pushback, et cetera? No, um, we have not partnered with any other groups in Hadley, nor have I spoken to local government yet. Um, we're testing for interest first. I, I also work with the Franklin Conservation District, and we've been running this program, a similar program, for the past year. So uh, the model that we're using is to find potential partners, and then because they already exist within the municipal structure, that organization um, in one case, let's see, in Leiden, our gardens are actually at the town hall and at the library. Uh, in, in Deerfield, they're actually doing a, um, a stream restoration at the elementary school. That it's been overrun with invasives and it's become a degraded uh, watershed as a result. So we're doing actually um, 
intent, uh, an intense eradication of invasives and reinstallation of native plants. Um, in Charlemont, we're working at the public school, uh, Hallamont Elementary, which serves, its grounds serve as the town park. So we are installing a very large riparian buffer there. It's about six feet across by 140 feet long of uh, native plantings. Um, so I will tell you that when we have floated the ideas to some of these groups, um, their experience with attempting things on their own in the past, the, the pushback that they have experienced is mostly with, um, there's probably a better term, but the one that I'm remembering is the road boss. So the people who um, manage the mowing in municipal spaces. So these are the folks who it's just easier to get on a riding mower and go. Um, and they don't want to have to be careful or have anything new to tend to, things like that. Um, we are actually in Deerfield where we're doing that stream um, installation. The Our, our, our contractor who's... who's doing the design and the plan is going to train the people responsible for the maintenance of that area on how to do it and when to do it. And it's actually, um, it is more work for them because right now it's just overrun with invasives. But the town of Deerfield has a climate zero plan in place for 2030. And so this is part of that plan. Um, the uh, situation in Hallamont where it's a large planting and it's right in the middle of um, sod field um, the school is going to um, manage that they have a they have a, a youth program it's called hey it's an acronym and it's the families that are involved in that program the children that are enrolled in that program are going to be the ones who um, maintain that space um, and so really the only difference for them is that they'll just have to mow around it um, and so it's actually less square footage for them to mow. Um, the, the school will have a fleet of volunteers on a yearly basis that will maintain that space. Um, so I'm curious about how your gardens are maintained now. Barely. Sporadic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I said barely. <laughs> <laughs> and I said um, so basically, it would be up to us then to, like, we might have to think about building in the cost of maintaining that, right? Yes. So, um, so for example, one of the libraries we work with, they have a friends of the library, and those people, um, they they go out and they do the weeding, you know, in every once in a while. The nice thing about native plants is that they once they're established. They're very unfussy. Um, I was talking to a woman. So in, in these towns, once we establish a municipal demonstration garden, we roll it out to residents to take advantage of a personal consultation at their house. And they receive a flat of, it's about $150 worth of, of plant, um, what they call plugs. But they're, they're not like the little baby things that we pick up at the local garden centers. There are these massive root systems and the plants are usually about eight to 12 inches tall. So the plugs are like two or three years old actually. And um, I was laughing with a woman who said, okay, I'm gonna take these home. How much do I need to water them? And we said, you don't need to water them. And she said, okay, well, um, how, how much compost do I put on? Do I put any fertilizer? No, you don't put any fertilizer on them. You don't have to compost. You don't have to mulch. You really just need to weed for the first couple of years until they spread and shade out any weeds that crowd out and have weeds that are trying to get in there. And really, you could probably weed every other week to once a month in the first couple of years. Um, and our, our conservation priority is that people don't cut the gardens down until like March April maybe, um, because native pollinators are overwintering in the stalks and under the brush of those plants. And so that's why we've seen our insect population plummet by 90% in the past couple decades, um, is because not only the chemicals that we're using on vegetation, but also because people clean up their gardens in the fall when all those babies have been <laughs> laid to rest in those stalks, and then they go off to the the landfill and die. So um, that's our, we're doing some training and some, some 
some retraining really on how to be a, an environmentally sensitive gardener too. So we're it's it's kind of it's kind of rehabbing people on on gardening. This woman laughed because she said, "I'm so used to having to baby everything I get from a nursery, and that's so much more work, and you have to keep them weeded, and you have to keep them watered, and you have to feed them so often." And we're like, "These are natives. They don't need. They actually don't like too much rich soil. They actually don't like too much fuss. You know, they they don't wake up at the same time that your greenhouse plants do. They wake up a little bit later and they go a little bit longer in the season, but they're really a lot less effort. So that's my that's my pitch for even if you have a fledgling weeding crew, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty manageable over time. I have and we could help we could help to coordinate you know, uh, the start to initiate a launch of, hey, come to these workshops and sign up to help maintain your library's weeding crew, you know, help, help to come. And that, that actually happened pretty spontaneously when I was running a workshop at one of our growers up in Cummington at Wing and a Prayer. Um, the participants in that workshop said, hey, this is a really big property. You maintain your meadow and all the all the display places that you have on your property. Can we all come and help sometime maintain your gardens? And somebody else in the group said, hey, and we should do that in our own towns too. We should. And so I got a little list going and they're, you know, on their own schedules going by. Some people are meeting up as a crew. Some people are just going by when they have an hour with their little weeders, you know. So um, it's been really interesting and kind of contagious, the enthusiasm around doing something environmentally positive, something that's a positive thing to help balance the scale a little bit more. I think people are so inundated with all the bad news. I have one more question. I, yeah. I, I, Patrick, I don't know, and Allison, maybe you remember, how uh, was their thought given to the strip of land that goes down to the senior center that runs mm -hmm. next to the parking lot oh. and borders the, the cornfields? How much of that do we own? Does the town own? They because that could be a really pretty walkway, like learning walkway. Yeah, you know how we abut the senior center, we share the parking lot. Yes. So yeah. On the, yes. on the north side of the parking lot, we abut to a to a cornfield and someone's home. And I was just thinking we don't we don't really have a nice way to walk to the senior center, but this could be like and kind of an educational, like, it could be really nice. But I don't know how much, like, if we have, you know, three feet, that doesn't work, right? Yeah, like, I don't know. know what we have. I think there's well, a there, there, I think. Isn't there, like, I think they're, like... And it might connect the there. organizations. Oh, too. yes, you're right, there are. They did plant a row of our varieties that will get there. Right? Aren't those yes. those little things planted? Yeah. What about the center strip? Isn't there a great the center space strip too? Yeah. In the center. I was just trying to think about connecting mm -hmm. the two or yeah. like the senior center involvement yeah. and us and like like right. connecting those buildings. Yes. I guess that kind of begs the question: Is this a the kind of thing where it's it's sort of a, a one off? Do you see this going on over the course of years? The program itself, oh, yeah, such that here. you know. Five years from now, we might say, wow, that, that really worked out well. Is there any opportunity for doing a separate project on the same parcel, like coming back to Hadley, whether it's a joint thing between the library and the senior center, which sort of share a site, or the old Goodman Library, which is going to be redeveloped? Is there, do you see an opportunity where this might be a to be continued down the road after we've done one project, say, at the front of the library? Is that, is that even done, or... There, there's definitely a possibility of that. We received this grant. So um, the district is, we are a state entity, which is sort of, um, as a somewhat redhead, I'll just say it's sort of like a redheaded stepchild mm -hmm. of the state. So um, we are, we operate as a nonprofit from grants from the state, but we are guaranteed those grants. Um, mostly from year to year. So there's a possibility that we could build on this in stages. Uh, we are partnering with the Holyoke Senior Center. That's where we're doing uh, the gardens in the city. And we are focusing on areas in the parking area that lead up to the front of the building because we want it to be uh, we want it to be encountered by people. We want people to notice the change. We want people to stop and look at the little signs, um, scan the QR code on their phone to see what's growing. We we want it to be an educational outreach thing so that people can learn more about native plants, whether we're giving a workshop or not. 
So um, it's entirely possible that we could we could start with one piece, see how it goes with um, maintenance if that's you know if that's the main concern, understandably, um, and then extend it if we want, and we could we could focus on that back portion that bridges the space between the two town services. Do you have photographs that you might be able to share of projects that you have done, mm -hmm. even if they're even if the plants are only this high now? Right. I can send you some. I don't have any prepared for right now to share yeah. on the screen, but I can send you some photos. Um, and if you um, would just sort of describe generally what was the project involved and what you were trying to achieve. That would be Okay. So we um our goals as the district are to inform people and display how beautiful native plants are. So that they, you know, a lot of people think wildflowers and native plants and they think weeds, right? And a lot of a lot of them have been cast as that for a long time, goldenrod, right? Um, we what we're trying to get people to think about is that these native plants and these native pollinators, so that they're so, and many of them endangered at this point, um, have a really close relationship. There are bumblebees that are generalized feeders. They eat off lots of different plants, but there are some plants for which that is the host plant, that is the only host plant for that, that pollinators, um, nymph stages, or that is the only plant that pollinator eats, things like that. So that's, that's our goals. Um, in terms of the design, and the function of the space, that is something that our consultant uh, listens to the client on and learns more about your priorities, more about what you'd like to see there. Or, you know, at, for example, at the Senior Center in Holyoke, you know, there are these little pro projections, these little median like parking buffers that are right along parking spaces. So we want, they're, they're thinking about there being something there, but not that falls over so that when people are trying to open their doors, they're fighting with the plants, you know? So being sensitive to the utility of the space, the purpose of the space and the sensibility of the client. So that would, it would be kind of a both and situation when we decide what goes in a spot. So if we say yes tonight, we're committing ourselves to working with you to come up with a solution that works for your mission as well as for us. It's not, hey, we're committing to this exact thing, right? Right. I mean, we're committing to a time frame, and then the next step would be? Right. The next step would be um, for our consultant to meet with you, and you don't have to commit tonight. You can deliver it. No, I understand. I'm just having to think it through, right? You know, what happens? In right. Terms of what happens with the town, right? So we do live in the town. So do you, do you, is the next step, do do we meet with the consultant, they design something, and then we take it to the town, or do we go to okay. the town first? Right. So that's a, good, that's a great question, um, because some of these libraries, they actually have they have authority over their own green space. So if if there are other people from in the town uh, staff that we need to approach, um, I could certainly write to the town and uh, contact and say, um, we've had a conversation with the library trustees about this idea. Um, we'd like to advance it to a conversation with you. Uh, the next stages are to select a space where this can go forward. After that, it's to bring in a consultant and have them meet with the with the trustees or whoever gets to decide what goes in that, what goes in the ground, whether it's you guys or whether it's someone from the town offices. Um, that conversation happens and then the designer gets back with a plan and presents the plan to you guys or whoever makes the decision. Um, and then once the plan is approved, then the space is prepared, the plant stock is ordered, um, and depending on what time of year we're in at that point, the plants would go in the ground probably in the spring or next fall. Some people decided to defer into the fall this year just because of other circumstances, and it was a really wet spring, so a lot of stuff was rotting in the ground, and perennials were, were not doing well. Um, so that's the 
That's the gist. It's not a hard line. There's a lot of room for conversation in the process. Um, I've found that the people involved really vary from project to project. So um, who would your people be that we would need to be in touch with at the town? I think that's, yeah, I think that is, uh, that would be probably the DPW folks. I, I don't really see them having a problem with this as long as it's, you know, not majorly affecting their mowing, mowing which is pretty much all to do for us on the outside. I mean, they'll, you know, in the fall, they'll um, pick up the leaves and, and what have you, but that's more or less the extent of what they do in terms of landscaping. They don't water, they don't maintain, they don't weed. Um, mowing and snow removal, if it doesn't interfere with those two snow. things. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty much it. But I, I think, again, if, it, if we're just telling them this is a distinct area, you're going to mow around it, it's not going to create any more problem than anything else that's on the site. I don't see why they would have any um, objection to the proposal. Mm -hmm. I don't. Is there anyone else that we would need? I can't think of who else we would need to talk to. We didn't talk. We, we well, moved I think it's a matter of courtesy. Well, I would yeah, certainly yeah. let the yeah. Conservation Commission know, and I would let the Board of Select Beings know, not asking permission, but... Right, to like yeah. the Hadley Green Committee, right? They right, be interested yes. In like, there's a lot of folks that I think would be interested and might want to participate, and especially in the educational opportunities, but in terms of right. like so. clearance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's really what just, I was thinking of. Just that. that. Yeah. Anybody else have any, any questions or comments? So I have a question about that. Um, who does it make sense or who would it be best received? Um, how would that news be best received um, by us? Is there a specific sender that would be the best person to send that information or communications about this project? Send it to the library. You mean who on our end would receive, who would be the point person? That, right, that would be, who, that would be who among us? <laughs> yeah, that would be me, most likely. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. And if you need a description or um, a sequence from me, I'm happy to write that down for you, Patrick, so you can include it if you'd like. Yeah. Great. Right. Thanks. Anything else? I think that's all we've got tonight. Um, thank you okay. so much for making time and thank you for your patience. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you for inviting me. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Good night. Cool. Not the all time Zoom fail, but pretty close. No, uh, whatever. Yeah, we all were together. It was a collective fail, yeah. Patrick. Oh. Don't take it on you. She was very gracious. Yeah, too. She, she was. That's exciting. Yeah, that sounds very. Yeah, yeah it yeah. seems like a great opportunity. It's almost too good to be true, but oh, yeah. it, it really does seem like a, yeah. a win win for everyone involved. But, it is a nice picture. Yeah, so. I make a motion to go ahead to and proceed to, you know, I guess the next step would be for you to find out if there's any objections, but my motion is that we should proceed to the next step. Second. Further discussion. I think my one comment might be that... <clears throat> I would like this to be someplace. I'm not sure that putting a matching or a symmetrical bed someplace else in front is going to be in a place that will draw attention and be visible so that people make the effort to go and look at it. And I am thinking of the program this past summer for children when there were the animals out on the front lawn and a gajillion little people and parents and caregivers, um, which suggests to me that we do need, on occasion, some space for that kind of an activity. Um, but I was thinking, well, would you be able to put it along the sidewalk just out here? But then I thought about salt and snow 
and that might be problematic. I would, That's why I asked. If, what, if, if we said yes today, are we committing to that? Because I sort of agree. Once I heard you want people to be seeing it, et cetera, I thought, well, that's tucked away. I love it. I think for beauty's sake, it's great there. But if the goal is educational. Right. So that's why I asked that very specific question. Are, by saying yes, are we committing to this area that you guys have already discussed? And no, your answer is no. But I feel like, yeah. like you, those questions can all be addressed like later. Mm -hmm. I feel like she was open to it. And unless anyone here is not open to it. Oh, the concept I'm certainly in favor of. I'm just thinking about the practical matters. And when she explained the educational portion, even if we invite them to give programs, you know, that includes walking past there and talking about exactly what we have and then what you can do at your home, da, 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 da. I mean, that will certainly draw attention to it, but... It, if it's someplace that gets ambient attention without a specific effort on the part of people who come to the building, that strikes me as a more desirable option if there is one of those. You could certainly revamp one of the existing beds that's sort of languishing. I mean, mm -hmm. there there's several options for that, but um, you know, one thing that came to my mind when this was presented to us was that, you know, that strip along, and, and again, this is not prominent real estate, but that whole strip along the back driveway, mm -hmm. that is wanting to revert to a meadow state. Like, yes. That just wants to be a meadow. It does. Um, and, you know, there are times when I look at it, because we, I mean, we have to clean it up, and we've been lucky to have a, a few volunteers that have come. I've gone out there and spent a Saturday cleaning it up. It, it's sort of like, well, it's too bad that we're, I mean, it seems like we're in cr at cross purposes with what mm -hmm. the space wants to do. Yeah. So that would be a great yeah. spot to like have it just grow wild mm -hmm. the way it wants to and then not have to maintain it. Yeah. Because it's a royal mess. The Pakistandra maybe will fill in eventually, but I don't think it's ever going to keep those weeds up because the things that grow up oh, are really bigger much. and it like was. six feet tall, yeah. like whatever they are. Those lettuces, the wild lettuce. Kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, I think. From what she said, all of this can be open to discussion. We just have to say yes and then make sure there's no objections and then all those conversations work. Is there any further discussion or are we ready to vote? All in favor of pursuing this? Good. Okay. Back to visioning, data collection, next steps. Well, when we left off, we were talking about pros and cons of having a visioning session, either internally or both internally and with the kids. I have a thought. Um, <laughs> so we're talking about getting community feedback about what we want the library to be, to, to build a plan, a long-term plan for the future to see how we change things. Is that right? I mean, Possibly. It, yeah. I mean, as as you're talking that, I'm, I'm thinking, can you also, can we also take short term feedback and try things? And, and with the idea, we're just going to try this for a few months to see how, how the public reacts to it. And then maybe this could become part of us or, or not. So, so we could have more immediate feedback for some suggestions and, and long, long term for other things. It, it just seems like that would be nice. <laughs> well, I think that some of the things that that, you know, are in that bulleted list that that we shared, it could be that we do something kind of small scale to kind of get a little bit of feedback. And that's also a way of kind of establishing with the community like we're we're interested in hearing from you and in res and re in responding to you, and that that may help build towards being able to do a you know a, a more effective visioning process, yeah. right? We've got more people invested in some small changes, mm -hmm. so that could be that could be a strategy. I would just offer the one observation that if we are going to appear to be responsive it would be good to have 
the results in time to incorporate anything that requires money, which is just about everything, in time for budgeting. Unless it was something we were going to fund from our own. Yes. Right. right. But depending like on... Like adding more hours or something yes. like that. that yeah, yes. For sure. But if it was something programming yeah. and we said, right. oh, this is exactly what we want to do with the Char Smith yep. fund. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like that would actually be something uh -huh. we could just completely do. Correct. Right. So. But if it has a budget impact. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. I guess I should have said budget impact, not just financial. How long has the new library been open? How long has it been here? We moved in in November of 2020. Yes. And then we opened to the public right at the beginning of the fiscal year, the following summer. So 2021, people coming in in July, June, July. So two, two, years. two years, but we've been in here for two and a half. That's right. Yeah. I mean, my only other thought is that there's there's something to be said for just letting things settle and kind of work their way into not a lull, but just a nice, smooth sailing for a while. Um, you know, you've had staff changes. You're about to have a little bit more of staff change. Like, just letting things settle and let people will take a breath and, um, you know, just be happy with what we have for a little bit, you know, and and nurture it along and, and really establish well what is here and now um, mm -hmm. and provide a firm foundation for the things that are, are basic in a library, you know, the amount of books and the type of books you have and your, you know, your own staff well-being and people are getting used to the hours and learning to navigate the building. Um, and it, it's been two years, but there's still been a lot of change going on in those two years for a new building. I think the idea is valid, but I think it's also valid to let let things simmer for a little while, you know, and, and let people feel firm at the foundation first. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. And I think, you know, I, we do glean a lot of information just from talking to people, you know, sort of like the grocer standing up from the shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. kind of get a sense of what the demand is. Yeah. It's not scientific. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're not, you know, you're going to respond a lot more to the people that come forward and say, you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought for collections? Have you thought about that? I mean, you know, I, I do start to notice when you get multiple people asking a certain mm -hmm. to do a question. Mm -hmm. A question has been raised about something. You know, it's really not, to me, the, the question of hours is really not that complicated. That's actually one of the easier things that we can address because exactly. it really is just a matter of whether the town funds it yep. or not. <laughs> it's a matter of, you know, if you right. want it, then get out there and just like we did to build this, mm -hmm. stay out on the street corner, library needs more yeah. hours <laughs> and at budget time. And we can we can try to do that. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. I think it's more complicated when you get into, um, you know, the whole other areas that we're not currently providing. So like, you know, for instance, the library of things, a uh, great idea for a lot of logistical things that we have to think about and that, you know, to, to figure those things out takes a lot of time from, you know, from staff mm -hmm. to, to make them a reality and figure out how to, how to go forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm more, I'm, uh, it's the hours thing is easy. Other things are harder. Um, I am always curious and there are a lot of things that um, we're already going to be adding. So, that, you know, finding out that there's 20 other things that we're going to be adding to, to get overwhelmed very quickly. But I do, I do think that it would be a good thing for us to be able to even just passively be able to accept feedback from people with just comments, that, you know, to your point, John, of, you know, the idea, whether it's an actual box or whether it's just a form, but just something that people can approach and, and just say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we'll, we'll take any suggestions, any feedback and try to learn from them and see if there are trends.
That's a definitely a valid approach, right? Which doesn't require any immediate change. If you go out and start asking questions, it does imply that you're going to have change, which to your point can potentially add to people's stress. If they, by stress, I mean like ours and staff, that people would have to do the things, mm-hmm. right? It could cause some stress versus if you did a passive collection online or whatever. So to John's point, we want to do something, you know, yeah. and then we just sort of talked about what we've seen, you know, every three months we say, hey, this is what's come in and we make it a point to actually talk about it at this meeting. And then, you know, one year from now we say, okay, if we've collected this stuff from a year. Do do we need to do anything like big with this? Do we, is now the time for the visioning? Is now the time for a big survey? I mean, that's definitely a valid, you know, suggestion. Yeah. I don't want it to be characterized, though, as, as a matter of, you know, to, to do these things or not do these things. We're not making the decision based on whether they're going to create stress. I don't think it's really a matter of stress. It's just a matter of, it is a matter of resources. It is a matter of yeah. people just having finite attention spans. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because um, that's where it creates yeah. stress. Like, at, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, we're like, you know, somebody asked me to do something two months ago and I haven't done it. Yeah, um, oh, totally. Just, there just aren't enough hours a day. So um, that's really what it comes down to. And it's, you know, if, if we can dream it up and we can fund it, then we can make it, we can make it a reality, especially if we have, you know, people that are invested from the community, whether it be, again, members of the trustees, the friends, other volunteers that want to get involved. Um, I mean, the library to me, as a metaphor, it's just like that, you know, that grass that's wanting to grow up along that strip. That's what I've wanted to see is like, what will grow up here by people just coming into the space and using it for their own purposes? Mm-hmm. What community interests are there that will reveal themselves by people just coming in and seeing that this is an available space? All kinds of things are happening here and they have nothing to do with our planning or any intention behind it. It's just we've created the space and now all kinds of groups are meeting here on all kinds of subjects that it interests. And like, we voted to approve this, right? So this is a big thing that's going to be happening over the next year. So it's, you know, so we already have something that's happening that's going to require some, you know, collective energy. Is it possible to distribute to the town pieces of paper in the water bill or the tax bill? Yes. Yes. What we've done to do with that. That's what we did with our survey. Mm-hmm. So we did that with our survey, and I just helped the have the uh, Russell School Committee do that. Mm-hmm. They got almost no paper surveys. We got almost no paper surveys. But I would think even if you did a, I, I don't know what like what you're thinking, but you can do a QR code yes. and send someone online yeah. from the yeah. water bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I was thinking more just an open ended request for feedback and let people without a tremendous number of prompts, we have this new space. Let us know what you think about it. Let us know what you'd like to see. Let us know if there's something that we can do better so that it's not such a formal survey per se, but if rather than directing people to say, you know, go to the suggestion box. Can can, you, can we do it in more than one uh, phase? So so we get suggestions and then we go through the suggestions and we put out another one saying these are some things that have been suggested. We'd like more community feedback and. Okay. On this? Well, I mean, I'm just looking for a starting point. And rather than have us something that's more open ended that allows people to comment on any variety of topics related to how they either perceive the library or use the library. Um, If our goal was to collect open-ended information from the public, I would still recommend that we do that online, not on paper. Right. No, no, no. I wasn't wasn't imagining inserting a survey. 
I was imagining, you know, a one third sheet of paper that says, please go to this yeah. website to just a QR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do a thing. Yeah, with a QR code, you have to do it on your device rather than sit at a real. You can have both. You can. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. But I wonder if that. Well, then I'm going to ask again, what what are we, what are we collecting information yeah, right. on? I, I, I'm going to circle right back yeah. to say, if we just, if we put out a survey that says open-ended, what do you think of the library? What's working? What doesn't work? Like, talk about anxiety. People like, don't, be. well, it is, a, it is a lot to process. The processing of that is extremely yeah. time consuming. Yeah. But the, the two things, one if people don't know why they're doing it, we're asking the survey because we're mm -hmm. going to do X, right? If you don't say that, their run, minds run away with them. So we have to have a clearly stated, why are we asking you this, right? The Hadley Russell School said, this is, we're going to, we want to take this to the CPA. We don't know what to recommend. Please help us. What are your priorities, right? So I don't Their know. minds might run in lots of different directions or like, I would just dismiss it. I exactly. would just be like, whatever. Like the, or they always want yeah. comments. Like, like yeah. Yeah. it's an open-ended invitation for people to get mad at us. Yes. That's what I meant by anxiety. Yeah. Right? Uh, like, uh, like an open-ended invitation for someone to be like, I want 10 more hours a week. And then like, I said, I wanted that. What, like, right. Or I'm still mad that you built the building. <laughs> Or just an open ended. Well, yeah. I don't actually care about that, but I mean, the, it's built. But it's I'm a waste of our time to collect that. that. I, don't, I don't care, but I mean that I worry that it leads people to believe that some idea they have may be able to happen. Yeah. Just financially, it yes. can't happen. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not to say we can't do this open ended survey, but we should say why specifically we should put some. And I, I would say, I personally have found, I know this is not everyone, but I have found that people are very forward of just reaching out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get all kinds of inquiries about, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't find that people are that shy when they feel strong, some, strongly enough about something that they feel that they have something to comment or contribute. They will reach out through, as I mentioned, through either the forum on the town website, and I'll get the comment or the question, a phone call, an email comments at the desk, which then makes its way to me. Um, so not saying that I hear every community sentiment, but I feel like in terms of like what we're talking about, just to like an informal, just workshop test, I feel like we kind of get that on a weekly basis of just for dealing with the public in general. That's fine. Um, and that's sort of your, hey, can we have a, you know, a specific thing on the website or a specific form somewhere that we just collect and talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that might be enough for a while. Mm -hmm. sure. So we sort of have put three different types of things on the table. Having a, a large scale visioning exercise, either internally or externally, um, or both. Having a survey of some sort, or having a, a sort of more low key collection online comment box, et cetera, that we would be revisiting. So like if I'm summarizing what, like the categories of things I've heard. So we could, we could vote on it tonight. We could sit on it and come back with the intent that we're going to vote on a direction at the next meeting. I, I'm open. I'm just trying to lead the conversation. So I have a question that I think might inform this, which is, does it feel like we're sort of like the library doesn't have a rudder right now? Like, does it feel like we don't have a sense of kind of like when you're making decisions about like programming or what have you, does it feel like there's something missing in terms of like guidance and priorities and a mission or something that we can help to inform through this process? Or does it feel like, like you depicted we're at a place where we kind of like know what we're doing. Like, you know, like, yep, let's have some smooth sailing for a little while and, you know, adjust some things, build some things, but 
but like kind of stay the course from like the vision that led to the building. So I'm just wondering what I don't, your sense is I, about I a pressing need. Or? I don't feel I don't feel a pressing need in terms of in in operational terms because I feel like we're you know busy every day implementing doing you know doing things. I don't think we've needed to. I think we got one gentle prod and it wasn't even really a necessary prod but at the beginning of you know being open again taking direction from trustees we're here we're open we want to see a lot more programming and that's what we did we got busy doing that um and i think we succeeded i, I don't really see that so much as more my sense of um it's sort of no different than how how I feel when I interact with the friends, for instance, and that I'm sort of like an honorary friend there to somehow implement their whatever their vision is and to make to make it work with the library, you know, with our library operation, uh, so that we're all facing the same way and not working against each other. And I feel like with the trustees, the it's it, it was very easy for me personally when we were in the process of constructing this library because there was just this steady this is what you're working towards these are the end goal i mean the mblc did a great job of setting up all the mile markers that you yeah. needed to work towards yeah. and i don't know that you know internally like do we have we replaced that process with some other set of pro processes that we want to work forward and that I, that I then you know work by day to make sure that the goals are met by the next time that we meet or whatever the deadline is. Um, you know, we talked a lot about um, fundraising continuing, whatever, whether it's a capital campaign or fundraising for some other purpose. I think there's a lot of work that we can do there, but we have a lot of, we already have a lot of funds that have been given to us that we haven't necessarily figured out, well, what are we going to do with these funds? Should we be, you know, setting goals every year and benchmarks and how we, how we use those? I feel like there's a lot of conversation that we, should it have sort of figure out what's the, you know, which way are we facing now? I sort of agree with that, like, like with what you've got. Like, yeah. Rather than trying to add on more, let's look at what we've More would be okay, but I just feel like we have, we already have like a bunch of stuff that we haven't really necessarily articulated what are we, you know, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Or what are, you know, what are the, what are the goals for, um, you know, for, for the next 10 years or the next five years, whatever it is, a long range plan, uh, you know, goals that could then influence the actual long range plan that we file with the Board of Library Commissioners saying, this is what the library right. is doing, because that's what we talked about. That's the library. thing we actually have, like, yeah. I think all of you don't maybe yeah. know that you have to have a long range plan. Yeah. With the library, Board of Library Commissioners. And that, to me, that's what I feel like, if I were to say we're missing anything, I don't, I don't think we're missing anything sort of day to day, but I do think we are missing a long term vision. Like if I were to recruit another library trustee, what would I say their job is? What do they do besides you come to the meeting once a month and you, you know, evaluate Patrick once a year? You know, like what is the vision? What role do you play? Um, but it, to me, uh, at this point, it doesn't involve community. So but whether that's the right answer or the wrong, and it's not that to say I don't care about the community, because I do, but I think that if we don't collectively have any sort of vision first mm -hmm. for the library, we can't then go to say, hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. You know, so I would kind of agree with your sentence. And I, I do, uh, just to add on to that, I feel like that everything that we have done has created um, a resiliency for this, for the for the organization, for the for the library, um, I think that our success with fundraising, it, as hard as it was, but you know, knowing how that goes and sort of learning from your mistakes, that's given us a lot more control of our fate than we had ten years ago. And I think that 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 to me is like really the most important thing is to really be in control of our operation and not be at the at the whim of external circumstances because again if people continue to contribute money to the library that makes us powerful if someone in the community says i want you to do x y and z we say yeah that sounds like a great idea and here's the money you know it's not a struggle it's like yeah sure we can do that because you've done the hard work of raising the money so that to me is like it's job one and it has 
hard as, as it is. I think that's really something that I would love to see us continue to build on because we've done a great job so far. So that seems to point more towards an internal visioning process that then, and I don't know if that just means just us or if it's us and the staff all together, or, but but something that's a little bit more in-house. Well, do you want to get vote in? on something, whether it's this or do nothing or survey? Do we want to vote on something tonight? Are we, is the goal for tonight to come to a resolution or is the goal for tonight to discuss is this like a first reading and then we vote next time? I, I don't know what the... I personally would like to vote next time. And okay. the reason I say that is that um, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners does give guidance on visioning. So maybe if we could find that guidance and read it, then we could decide if it's for us or not, right? Like, are we able to undertake this? Right. Whereas if we commit to that right now, <laughs> we don't know what we're committing to, right? Like, so... I would like to at least revisit the Mass Board of Library Commissioners guidance on visioning before I vote in. I mean, if everyone else wants to vote, I'm fine, but that's just um, how I feel. Well, that sounds that's reasonable. That's great, because one of my, yeah, I was about to ask, like, what does this process look like and where might we find some guidance around it? <laughs> All right, then that's all we, that's all I'm just on, as you say. Then you can sort of take time to say something. Go ahead. So I can update you on um, kind of, I took kind of the lead on the fundraising, and I'm thinking about two routes right now that we should go, and I have a question for the board. I would like to create a brochure Simple start, how do you give to the library? How to get different ways to give to the library. You know, Nate, will, you can give in your will. You can have a naming opportunity. You can give to our capital fund, or you could give to friends. And that's my question. Like, I'd like to go to friends. Like, do you all agree that we should put friends on there? And like, kind of get a statement from them. Like, if you give to the friends, here's what you're giving to. Here's where your money goes. Here's how to give to the friends. If you go to Capital Fund, here's where your money goes. Here's what happens. And the same with many opportunities. Yeah, I, I do think we have, before we do that, we should have a conversation, though, about what are all, because, I mean, there are avenues to give that, we're, you know, people do all the time, just send a check, and it goes to a general gift fund that is that is an option um whether we want to push them in that we want to like formalize that as a direction do we want to like push them to do it some other way like have it you know go to a new fund for the community foundation that this is essentially the same thing i mean we should talk about like what what all oh, is so there. you are thinking i didn't realize there was a conversation about having a different fund so. It's, not, it's not a conversation. I'm just saying like there is that reality that when somebody sends a check for $100 or $10,000 and it just says Hadley Public Library. Well, that goes to the goes town. It goes yeah. to the town. And it winds up. And, and I thought we were trying to, and, and I'm sorry, I have that like lapse of a few years yeah. that we were trying to kind of stop that a little bit and put it more into our funds for our future so we can have an endowment one day or... Um, Absolutely. But we, if we're trying to, again, if we're trying to intentionally divert something to, you know, one way or the other, we would need to be very clear about what, you know, what the purpose is. And does so, that duplicate the the function of having those funds, which are more or less open to whatever purpose, as far as I can tell? I don't I haven't seen any limitation on what we need. So maybe I could call you, we could set up a meeting, sure. and we could just kind of go through this, and then I can bring it back to the board. Is that okay? Yes. And the second question I have for fundraising is, I pulled Lynn in on this originally, do we want to go back to the idea of having a gala? Do we want to, you know, we never opened and had a gala. We tried, COVID pre hit. <laughs> <laughs> like, will it bring back COVID? <laughs> but, um, you know, it was really kind of a nice and special idea. And is that something that we want to think about doing again? Um, we never celebrated the opening of this library. 
I mean, we did in like certain oh, ways dark. and how small, but we never did like a big kind of grand opening. We couldn't. <laughs> Uh, so, so is there an anniversary day coming up that would be a natural time to do that? We could look that up. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it. it is. Various anniversaries, yeah. the anniversary that we got the grant. That's when we jumped up and down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, if there's something coming up, so you have time to plan for it, we can yeah. use that date. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Just okay. because logistically it works. Yeah. Say. Okay. And I there are people that are not us that would be really interested in putting on a gala. Like, so I think we could find people that like putting on a gala. I mean, we did last time. We had like party animals. Yeah, we had those people. Okay, and then the last thing I just want to say is not related. It is about the Right to Read program I said I was working on. Um, I have been in touch with Annie McKenzie. Uh, we are trying to shoot for the middle of October. Patrick, I need to talk to you a little bit about um, the film will cost $350. We will wind up with a DVD for our collection after that night. The, the um, school district will, is implementing the science of reading. So they, I've asked Annie if she could point, give me the name of somebody that might want to be able to talk to us about Hadley's, you know, how Hadley is implementing the science of reading. Mara Breen, who is um, right now kind of fascinating. She works out of Dr. Seuss's house, right? They opened Dr. Seuss's house to her in, in her study of the science of reading. And she is she has opened up, um, she has a PhD in, in educational psychology and is doing work on a science of reading. She will be a panelist for us. And I said I'd be willing to, to do it since I am kind of certified in the science of reading, but I'm having to have to have the school people first because I think that would be better. Um, and then we'll show the movie and then we'll have a panel discussion. We're hoping for October 11th or the 18th. And I just have a quick question about where the funds would come. Like, do I go to the friends? Is this the group? Um, do we come out of like? I mean, the Charlotte. No. And you, any well, of them, you, you know, if you want to kind of stick with the friends' intention to do this all once a year. Well, I'm actually looking at that. No, there's not extra funding for the right. because that would just pay for the license. But um, right, I, I would think that that's something that we could just do from. Either whatever plays around any money is on which is minimal, or you know, from Lake Meg funds or library gift funds. It might be nice, honestly, to take it out of a fund that someone gave us and honor their name mm -hmm. and give people that idea, like really put that name forward, right? Like the John Doe, you know, film on right to read, you know, this is you know, this is why it, it might give people ideas about giving. That's a good idea. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, the one that comes to mind is the Dorothy Urch. Um, well, yeah. I don't think that... I don't Because she was a reading specialist. What's that? Right. But I don't know that there's any... I don't think there's anything... I think that fund may be more or less depl depleted. We haven't had anything from could that family. Could, you look? could we Could we talk about that? We can look, but I'm 99% okay. I'm sure there's, you know, not not much in the tank. Well, maybe right. we still give it her name, even though there's not money left. And it, yeah. and like, no, she did yeah. give money. Like, yeah. like right. you know, it was somebody who. Okay, so no. that's what I'm working on. I'm just letting you all know. So, don't we need to vote to authorize the money if you're aiming for an October? Yes, you do. Mm. You would have to vote to authorize the money. Good point. So, I'm just going to make a motion. Do we need? I, I would just ask, do we need a vote to, to spend three hundred dollars from, or whatever source? Better to than not. Okay. Right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, with incomplete information before looking at what's available, I think that there's plenty of, there's no shortage of places that are, that have money and that are appropriate. So I don't, I mean. But well, how about if we money. have a motion to approve the expenditure required to purchase sure. the rights to show this from available gift or state monies on yeah, hand. Yeah, I was just going to move to authorize it out of Lake Meg unless there was enough available in the ERCH fund, since that's our Well, we'll just say from 
Leg Meg or gift funds. Go to make the motion. I'll write it down. I move that we authorize the expenditure of, is it $300? It's $350. $350 to purchase rights to and the, DVD. I don't know that rights and DVD from available funds that are either gifts or Lake Meg. Second. I'll second that. Oh, thank you. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John, for organizing. Do we have any other topics or items before we go into a brief executive session? I have only one thing that I should have asked you to put on that agenda. Super quick. Do we have an update on the 2022 donor shelf? Uh, on when it will be installed? I do not. I have not heard from uh, Dan. Okay. Wow. I will follow up and see okay. if he's got any. I wouldn't, I'm trying to remember when we sent that off. Wow. It was, yeah. <laughs> and there was only like 20 names. So, yeah. It, yeah. I just, your idea of the gala gave me the reminder that, oh, we have another opportunity to celebrate at some point. You know, that's another natural thing. Not, not that it's a gala. There's not that many people. No, but that could. Yeah. If it were installed just prior to the gala, that could. No, I was thinking that's another opportunity for a smaller gathering to honor right. those folks when we unveil it. And I should I should say we've had many, many inquiries from people based on coming in and saying, you know, seeing it and saying, well, how do I get a proposal? Yeah, yeah. So we're ready to work work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I mean, for us, it would, it would actually be great, but yeah. um, I, I can't really say that it has actually turned into a lot of donations, mm -hmm. but um, there's been a lot of interest. Well, maybe if there's like availability in a QRC code or something. Yeah, I think if we made if we made some sort of publicity mm -hmm. push for that, mm -hmm. I think we would get a response. Okay. Anything else? Then I move that we go into executive session for the purpose of contact contract negotiations with out any intention of returning to open meeting. Second. And we each need to vote individually to do so. Yes. 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 